What's going on, guys? Welcome to Locked In Podcast, episode 10. A um, couple familiar faces here, uh, myself and Daniel. We got two not-so-familiar faces. You guys want to introduce yourselves, Raul? The man behind the camera. Uh, don't get scared, guys. It's just this episode. <laughs> Logan, will be, be, <laughs> Logan will be back here next month. Uh, Hans Taplin, founder of Byway Dallas. <laughs> Welcome. First, first special guest on the pod. This should be cool, man. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with his brand, I'm sure a lot of you locals are, um, but if you guys not, are not familiar with his brand, big brand out here in Dallas. He's got, what, what, what do you think are your, like, some of your craziest collabs like thus far? Um, I would, ah, craziest collab. I mean, they're all crazy because I'm, I'm such a last minute person. I'm just like, let's just figure it out, you know, and it stresses <laughs> people out. But I, I would say from a problem solving perspective, like the D Magazine collab or Scottish Rite Hospital collab, or um, even the Cowboys Club of how that- That's pretty surreal, man. How that actually f unfolded from almost getting sued <laughs> to the collaboration. So it's, it's I'm just very grateful for every opportunity. Yeah, that's sick, man. Yeah, this guy's, it's got a crazy catalog, man. It's some really cool stuff. We're gonna get into it um, here in a minute. Uh, let's we'll start off with the fits. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Danny, take it away. Um, pretty basic. I'd say this is like a typical Daniel fit here. Not trying to start that, but uh, <laughs> just Supreme sweatshirt from a couple years ago. Lulu pants, as always. And then the uh, John New Balance finally made an appearance on the pod. Finally found them after months of looking. Eric and Logan grabbed a pair too. I'm the only one that doesn't have them yet. So, but coming They're great. Soon. They're great. Coming soon. <laughs> uh, myself, um, Arcteryx hat, uh, Balenciaga, be different hoodie. Love this hoodie. Um, Stu's pants and Jound Asics. Pretty basic matte fit, man. You know, I wear this kind of stuff every day. Yeah. Let's get even more basic. Uh, basic <laughs> V logo, uh, vault hat. Uh, Not man, so basic. By <laughs> by way of Dallas, Dallas Cowboys uh, hoodie. Uh, some cargos, black cargos, and uh, off white Jordan fives. I wore these for a reason. Stay tuned. Yeah. I paid him to wear this hoodie, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that check's coming. <laughs> um, Ralph Lauren um, puffer quilted jacket. Spent way too much on this, but I appreciate the man for what he's done. That's sick, I like dude. That I didn't even realize. I, like that I, I honest, that kind of gives me the same vibe as remember that um, Letterman that I thought was vintage. I oh, thought yeah. that was vintage, dude. I, that's what. Have you seen yeah. that Letterman? Probably. There's a Letterman yeah. that I think probably came out in that same uh, that same collection, and it's really sick. I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Um, but That's I have sick, a bro. three dollar vintage lacrosse jersey from Boulder High School. Got this from eBay. Nike sweats, eBay hat, and uh, Air Max ninety six two. That uh, I just I love the old dumb running looking Nike Air Max. So I like it man. often, man. Yeah, it's, right. I've never seen those. They're sick. And I'm rocking the ashy ankles too. <laughs> <laughs> nah. You thought they were Dion's. Daniel thought they were. Well, Dion's. I thought they yeah. were Dion's at first look when you first walked in. I was like, man, those kind of look like the Dion's. They do, yeah. They're sick, man. Those are sick. Thanks. Um, what? Let's get into uh, the collabs. Yeah, did you? You, you got to talk about them. Like, like, I know you're you're very humble. I this is the first time I've met you, and I can tell you're very very humble. But, like, w like, maybe not so, so much of like what are your craziest collabs, but like what? How does that work? Like, did. Do you reach out to them? Do they reach out to you? Like, because I mean, that's that's a dream of mine. Like something like something like that happening. Like, how does how does that whole process even start? You know what I mean? Good question. I think it's it's more of a strategy of knowing that. I mean, I come from a graphic design background. Graphic design is just problem solving from a creative, you know, scale. So if 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 I say my goal is to redesign the stop sign, it's because it's got to be functional. And it's got to have an aesthetic, you know, quality to it. It's impossible to redesign the stop sign. So I'm just using that as an example. But for collabs, I approach them as um, knowing that there's a goal for my brand is to help connect, help diversify the city. So I'll use D Magazine for an example. I collabed with him twice. I approached Geely Allison, the incredible woman who's the president of D Magazine. And I said that nobody reads your magazine um, and it sucks <laughs> and it's not good because, but you have this powerful brand. You have this D logo that everybody recognizes you. It's on the top of one of the, a, a very tall building downtown. You're not utilizing this brand effectively. And this is way before, you know, pandemic and all that stuff. 
So it was approaching her and being honest and saying, this is what Byway Dallas can do. Because I want my consumer, my audience, to be able to connect with the D Magazine brand. And now at the same time, they have value in their audience. I want them to connect with us. And it's just crossing paths. It's, it's literally connecting to the soccer mom who lives in Highland Park with the South Dallas kid who probably plays football at, you know, um, Duncanville, who, whatever. Yeah. It's knowing that we should, Dallas is built in silos. How can we, um, how can we cross those, bri- how can we Connect bridge them. those yeah. gaps um, per se? So I, I approach every collaboration that I've ever done on problem solving. The merch part is easy. It, and I say easy because yes, that's gonna what, that's gonna garnish attention. But if we're not, if there's no purpose, there's no, why am I collaborating? Like, it's a waste of time for me. It's beautiful, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's crazy, man. The way, the way your mind thinks is insane, dude. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. That's that crazy. That collab is iconic, though. It's the reflective jacket, right? Oh, we did. So that was the second one. That was um, the second one? The first one was a, a red varsity jacket. It was red on red. Nobody wears red like that. And it was yeah. just, a ch- it was a challenge. Yeah, for, uh, we'll probably put an image up, but I thought that was, Oh, such a cool it was like a rain jacket right like a it was a coach's jacket that yeah. we, we source red reflective i never seen red reflective we usually see silver reflective mm-hmm. but we source red reflective and uh, if you take a picture with a direct flash it, it pops and it it um it unveils design underneath the jacket that's so, dope that's sick so damn great. i should have brought that gosh i'll put a picture <laughs> of it <laughs> roll is on your stuff bro like yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah man, I, day I, one for real I mean, a lot of people know I'm a born and raised uh, fan, but locally, like by way of Dallas, I feel like it's always been the brand in Dallas. For my sure, opinion, in my eyes. I mean, what even what even other like I mean, major streetwear brands is there? Would you consider yourself streetwear? Uh, that's a great question. I I um I started to appreciate the term streetwear because I can, I I cannot like take any credit with if it wasn't for streetwear, you know, like for that look culture yeah. um it becomes a little bit appropriated with other like you know people are figuring out street wear i'm just trying to have wear like you know mm-hmm. uh yeah. i don't i don't live in the street you know i got a house <laughs> I, but i understand like you know it, it comes from the skate culture is where street wear was rooted i can't take ownership of that because i mean from the from a grand scheme perspective yes it's street wear but i have always been very cognizant of how i approach that type of term that term yeah, yeah. but it, i will i will i will accept i you know i agree yeah it, it, i guess it is yeah because right i mean you've got like the you know like the big pop like graphics and like the cool designs because yeah. i wouldn't you know it's not like high fashion you know what i mean you absolutely. know it's 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 yeah. definitely like catered to more like a casual um wear absolutely um but yeah that's yeah all your all your stuff's sick man um i see like soccer moms wearing it and you know i guess you could say like just regular Joe's wearing it too, but like when someone's wearing it, it's usually like in important places as well. You know, like I've 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 gone to bars and I've seen it. I've gone to parties and I've seen it, and it's like dudes everywhere. Yeah, that's that's scary. It's it just gives me anxiety. <laughs> like, cool. wear that's it, always wear sick it. though. Like I I mean we we're starting our merch thing, and you know it's it's a process. Um, I mean I know. You're on a whole other level right now because at this point all your stuff's cut and sew. But right now we're you know we're just the basic buy the blank, print the shirt, sell the shirt. You know what I mean? Just simple, like yeah. no samples, no just like just really cut and dry shit. Um, but the meaning behind. But yeah, design. just the, the fact that people are wearing out. It's I, I that that is like always super exciting to me. Whenever I see someone like we went to uh like when Travis came in town like the having his concert and stuff we went and I saw multiple people were like wearing on my shirt and I was like that's like that's such an insane feeling you know what I mean yeah what what point in like the bring up of the brand did you realize oh shit this is like this is getting this is getting pretty big like this is like you know what I mean when when did this start like hitting um probably when I got a cease and desist from <laughs> Ralph Lauren from uh Dallas Cowboys is when I realized that this this internet, this IG thing, I'm just bullshitting around, but now <laughs> people are like, see it, you know? Yeah. That's probably when I was like, all right, um, let me stop doing a lot of other things. I still treat it as a kitchen table project because you know, I've had full-time jobs since like when I come home at night after I put my kid to sleep, 
I'm, I'm working on Byway Dallas. And it's just, there's one person. Now I have a, a, a strategist, but it's just been from a single perspective. But that moment when I was like, man, um, this thing can really work is <laughs> yeah. when I get those when I'm in trouble and I'm like, Oh fuck, this is great. You know, I have, I have a, I have a huge question about that. Like yeah. huge question. So a lot of our tees and a lot of our, our graphics, like I was showing you are based on like older designs or like older movies, athletes and stuff. When you when you get a cease and desist letter, that just means like you need to stop the production and selling of it. Right. That, that is that what that, like, what does that mean? Well, from my perspective, the cease and desist meant that, um, I've crossed a, particular threshold, particular boundary, and they, and I, all respect to Ralph Lauren, they, I'm just, I'm not even a speck on their radar, but to me, it means that I'm encroaching on the potential, their potential to make money because my design yes, looks okay. close mm -hmm. to what they're doing. Most of the time I would say, don't even worry about those things yeah, yeah. because um, most of the time people are just they hire lawyers just to scare you. Go find, yeah, and go, go, they, they pick and choose. Exactly. Yeah. And um, my lawyer is literally, his name is Bruce Willis, like true story that my <laughs> lawyer's name is Bruce Willis. <laughs> and he tells me like, man, don't even worry about that. But when it comes to like a Ralph Lauren, that's when it's like, they have more money than you. And yeah, they yeah, will yeah. shut you down like this just because they have that, they got time today. Yeah. I don't have the money and I don't have time. So there's, there's the fine line. But I, I think maybe what you're getting at, I think I wouldn't, you're probably helping out if if you're referencing something from the past, you're probably helping that nostalgia more than you're hurting. You know, I, um, I mean, I agree. I was yeah. just like, because when we get a lot of like older people, like, hey, is uh, we just did our Back to the Future movies, like, is our is it Warner Bros. Bro? That that movie, yeah, I think so. yeah. They're like, okay, well, whatever it is, they're like, uh, is Warner Bros. not gonna sue you guys for this? And I'm like. I don't even know how that would work. You know what I mean? Are they really going to come and attack the vault? You know what I mean? Like we're, and like, if, if that were to happen, do you just have to stop? Basically, is that what what, it, what they're asking you to do is just stop the production of it? That means you hit that HR person or whoever sent you that contact, you get them on the phone immediately and you figure out how can you make merch for the new Back to the Future movie coming out? Okay. It is a, it is a blessing to get a cease and desist sometimes because you can turn that into a collab a collab because they're paying yeah. attention to you it's like they're doing something right because if if they didn't give a shit about what you're doing they're gonna let you do it and yeah, let them but if they're hitting you up it's like now let's go you focus yeah. on it's a good it's let's a cool get a to phone look at call it. let's 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 talk you apologize obviously but you're just like hey we love we were inspired by the you know the, this how can we be a resource for you guys? They don't have what you guys have. Yeah. Because you're selling all this merch to that audience that they can't touch. They can't touch. Absolutely. Or they don't know how to touch. So Absolutely. you can then say, hey, you're struggling because you're using Gildan tees <laughs> and cheap printing and they wash weird and all that. Whereas I'm making high quality stuff with designs that people like. How can we help each other out? Solving problems. That's right. a amazing way to look at it honestly i didn't even know. I didn't think of that yeah, yeah honestly I just, yeah yeah man that's that's wild um your clientele is pretty heavy too man we uh when i got this uh blue ranger jacket i saw dak quarterback for the cowboys i saw micah parsons wearing it i think i saw trayvon diggs wearing it too who's like the heaviest hitter that you know where's your where's your brand Ah, oh, man, I'm going to try not to get emotional, but I'm going to say like, just my, my kid, you know, because it's, it's like, <laughs> okay, when this, we went to the Mavs game not too long ago, I'm like, trying to look, come on, put something on. And he's like, I want to wear that green Dallas, by way Dallas jacket. That to me was like, damn, my kid fucks with me now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. Uh, That's really dope, man. From a, from a larger scale perspective, um, we were like, I love base baseball is my number one sport. And, yeah. um, he loves baseball too. We turn on the TV in the, in the morning before I take him to school. Baseball tonight with Harold Reynolds, or or it's like MLB Breakfast, whatever the name of the show is. We turn that on, and and Harold Reynolds Reynolds is wearing that jacket on TV. What? This really? This is like a couple, like a month ago. And Harold Reynolds played for the Mariners. He left right when King Griffey Jr. So he's an old school, but he's like the guy, in my opinion. I was like, damn, this jacket that I've was dicking around on my computer and this kitchen table is on TV. My kid can see that. It was like, that's amazing. Fuck, that's like, and I see, I saw him on a flight one time. So things I try, I really try not to pay too much attention. My old baseball coach said, Taplin, act like you've been there before. And I always don't try to like <laughs> think about things. I just want to just, just be 
just beat me. But seeing that on TV was like, man, this is that's crazy because he, we we were able to get to that point where Harold Reynolds is wearing that jacket. That's, that's crazy. cool. That's, that's really cool. sick, man. That's really sick. Um, I mean, we talked about a little bit before. Um, I mean, like we're trying to start our brand and stuff. Do you have any like? really helpful advice and maybe not even advice, but like inspiration or like just something you would say to someone that's trying to, be, you know, I mean, I feel like everyone's trying to start a brand nowadays. You know what I mean? There's all like, it's all over TikTok. Like all the kids are trying to like start a streetwear brand. Like what, how, what, what's some advice you can give to a kid that's watching this or anyone that's watching this, that is trying to stick, stand out first of all, and like trying to, to build a brand from the ground up because it's not easy it, I mean, it's insane it's insanely hard with the amount of competition it, there is it's very difficult for some i feel like for a lot of people for you to get to the point where someone says i'm gonna wear that shirt over this nike shirt today is very difficult you know what i mean that's that's a great question i would say what i there's two things first thing i always come back and say i say when everybody goes left go right the thing about the dallas market is that <sighs> There's, I literally have this like vinyl on my window in my office. It's that um, Dallas is getting better and worse at the same damn time. Like we're trying to progress, but at the same time it's getting worse. And it's like the, we're, we're in this weird floating level where it's just, we're just there most of the time. And I'm trying, like, we're all trying to like progress, but when it comes to like building a brand, Dallas market's perfect because there's so much, so many bad things out there so many bad restaurants, so many bad bars, so many bad brands, so many bad everything. It opens up the opportunity for somebody to do something cool and different. Yeah. So if everybody's make, everybody's wearing the color red, you make something that's blue and stand out because the people are sheep and people will wear, wear red in Dallas because everybody else will wear red. If you go to mm -hmm. Whole Foods, Central Market, what do you see? everybody looks damn same. Everybody looks same. <laughs> I'm looking at you guys. You guys are the epitome of what we need of just doing you, standing out. Like those people weren't wearing red, look at us and be like, damn, I wish I could be like that. But they're <laughs> stuck in this mode of like, they've never, they've never known anything else. So Dallas is it just do completely different, like go opposite. And that's what helped me at, to this day. Like I will do things that aren't, you're not supposed to do, you know what I mean? Like, and that's one thing piece of advice that I always say, I have this, this thing embroidered in one of my jackets. It says, if you can't convince them, confuse them. I was tired, of, I was honestly like, my dad was like, before he passed, he was like, make sure you have a career where you can wear a hat every single day of your life. And I was like, man, okay, cool. And so I wear a hat every single day. I'll go to, just the fucking last week, I got invited to this restaurant opening, like, uh, it's, I don't know if I can say, I'll say anyway, like uh, uh, somebody works with Rangers organization and Cowboys organization, their friend opened up this new restaurant. I got invited. I'm sure I show up at the door, probably wearing the same outfit. And they're like, oh, Mr. Tapp, we see on the list, you can't get in. I'm like, why? You're wearing a hat. Take it off. I'm like, hell no, I'm good. I, I, you guys are stuck in this mentality that mm -hmm. for some reason you can't wear a hat into whatever. I've never got that. I've never understood that. We were just talking about that <laughs> randomly the other day. Like, what's the thing with the hat? Am like, I, like I, 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 maybe I have a gun underneath my hat. I don't know. <laughs> but I left. And I was like, I'm going to stick to my values. However, I was tired of trying to convince people that I fit into this this restaurant or this bar because I'm gonna take my hat off. I'm, I'm not gonna wear sneakers. I was like, F that. And now I'm gonna confuse you. Now I'm gonna be like, I'm good. I'm not gonna go in there. But now I'll go to like another place with some other friends. I'll wear like sweatpants with loafers. I'm just gonna do opposite. And it's and people are like, something's going on with this dude. He looks interesting. I wish I, I need to understand who this person is. And I'm confused. It's like, making people question who you are because they can't pinpoint, they can't generalize. And that's yeah. like, when I look around the room, we, we're, you can't generalize. I would now have no idea your skill set. I would have no idea you're a shop. <laughs> and that's the beautiful place to live and to be in Dallas is by not letting people put you in a box and to assume. Everybody else, I can at somewhat assume what they, but once we break out of that shell, it's kind of close to like what the coastal cities like New York and LA, you never know if you're sitting next to a, fucking matthew williams or a you know yeah you have no idea yeah. you know that's, that's what i love I have, I have family all over and every time i go visit my family in california go to san francisco go to some of those other cities just to see all the different things that people are wearing and get inspiration like the people that i follow on like tiktok and instagram as far as like style inspiration are in like 
London, LA, New York, San Francisco. Kind of what you said earlier is a lot of people in Dallas here yeah, it's kind of dress the same. Yeah. And I really, really realized it when I haven't worn jeans in two years. I finally said, you know what, <laughs> I got bigger legs. I want to get like some baggier jeans, right? I went to every single store in DFW that sells jeans and Nordstrom had one pair of like that baggier loose fit jean and I bought it. It's but like outside of that, I'm like, everyone has just like the yeah. regular straight fit, tapered leg, skinny style jean. And I just wish Dallas would branch out a little bit because it goes like what you said, like when you, if you go to a steakhouse here in Dallas wearing a hat or in some of the outfits that we're in, they'd probably put you in a corner at the back of the restaurant, right? Yep. Whereas you go to LA or something and you're dressed like us, that's how everyone else is. So you look normal because like you said, you don't know, you could be the CEO of some tech company and you could be the founder of some startup. You know, you have, yep. you'd have no idea. No my, idea. My dad's probably watching this right now. I remember <laughs> this is something pretty, sim pretty similar to what you just said. I'm very s smaller scale to getting into a nice like grand opening restaurant, but we took some family pictures for the first time in a long time the other day. <laughs> They're already dying behind the camera. <laughs> but uh, my dad was just like really on me about like wearing like a polo or just something nice. And I don't even own any of that, bro. Like yeah. I don't even own a polo. Like, I don't no, even, I've never I seen don't own a, polo. a uh, like not baggy pair of pants and stuff. And I pulled up and just the normal stuff I'd wear, a vault hoodie and some Stussy pants and like just, just the stuff I wear. He was really mad at me for a minute. And then after we took the picture, he saw the picture. He's like, you know what? I'm glad you wore that. That's you. Yeah. And that you. to me felt really good. I was like, Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. he's like, I'm really glad you wore that because that that's you and what? You know what I mean? Like, I don't think it's important for anyone to judge that. You know what I mean? If they're, hopefully they're not going to look at this picture and be like, oh, what's well, Matthew wearing? But that's me. You know what I mean? That's that's me. And that's so important about this this space, this shop, is your perspective, especially on that, what you said about the denim and about the polo, there's a community of, 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 of people who are the same, who share that same sentiment. And if you can communicate that with them, as you're talking about, I haven't worn jeans in five years. I will wear a t-shirt that has that print on the back. You know what I mean? Because I relate to it. It's like, this is a new generation. We can do what we want. If you can hone in, if you can translate you, your, like you, all you guys, because there's people that can relate and they will become friends, fam, customers for life because it's, this feels like home for them. You know, Everybody's going through that. We have that background. That, you know, there's this interesting shift of our parents and you know, are the you it's it's there and you have a great perspective and show them you can be successful. You can do these things by being you, you know, uh, that, I love that. Yeah. I mean, Dude. it's first impression for a lot of people is still big. Like I have long hair. I work in the corporate America at a major company here in Dallas, but you would never guess what the long hair I have. I go to work, still have the long hair. And at first people are like, I think I lose a little bit of credibility with people when I meet them for the <laughs> first time. You know, just because they look at me and they're like, oh, what does this guy know? And then we start working together and we start talking and they're like, oh, this guy's normal. This yeah. guy's normal. He knows his stuff. He's really good at what he does. There's a reason he's put in this position. And now they just look past it and they recognize me from far away. It's like, oh, that's one of the three guys here at this building that has long hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's valuable. Yeah. To have your own individual look. You said, uh, you also said, you mentioned something about like um, your people will feel at home. I feel like we, get, we, we have that here for sure. Yeah. I know. I know a lot of shops are, especially resale shops. I feel like um, they get a really bad rap nowadays for like being hostile and kind of assholes. And you know what I mean? It's just, it's just it. Does, it really is. It really is the way it is. But I feel like what you said. I feel like, I feel like we're ourselves, and we do our podcast, we talk, and we do our vlogs, and we just have fun with it. I feel like people really uh, relate with that, and like I think that's why it's been. I mean, we haven't blown up like crazy, crazy. I mean, we got almost eight k subs. It's cool, but like. I think the community we have is so loyal to us because they feel at home. And I, I think that's, I, I yeah. think it's because we're ourselves when we do our, our podcasts and we do our, our YouTube video, our vlogs. I think it's because we're ourselves. I yeah. think uh, people can yeah. feel comfortable here. They don't have to feel like they need to be stepping here in here with the craziest shit on. Like they can feel comfortable with it. We're not going to judge. You know what I mean? And I feel like we're normal, chill dudes. And I think that goes a long way. That's great that you recognize that because you can intimidate a consumer immediately if they don't feel cool enough or they feel like you know dang I, I just i'm not wearing the right thing like or are they talking about me whatever yeah to be open or just just to be let oh, welcoming to everybody is, is very very important yeah i feel like uh being knowledgeable about the culture too is very important because 
people come in here and ask like, what's this or what's that? And then we can answer their questions. And uh, I think another cool thing is like when people look at the pairs that we have hanging up or in the case and they'll be like, damn, I used to have those. When yeah, I was we, get, we get a lot of nostalgia exactly in here. Knows, yeah. Everything, yeah. Same thing. Like, yeah. oh, I had that poster in my 15 bedroom, like when I was 15 years old, like I, that's a super cool feeling to me always. Yeah. Parents will come in here with their kids to get their kid a pair of shoes. And then the dads will look at like, yeah. I had the. I used to play basketball on those, or they would look at the newspapers that we have here on the table and just get. One we get all the time is that shirt. come fly with me a VHS. They're always like, "Oh, I had that VHS." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We used to have a VHS TV playing here, but we, could, we didn't really have anywhere to put it. Our last shop, we had a VHS TV that would play in the window all day. That was really cool. Nice. You had Space Jam going most of the time, right? Yeah, I wish we had another. I wish we had spot a spot for it somewhere. It's just really heavy. I was gonna put it on that IKEA shelf right there, but probably not. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah, probably it's be. That thing it's was so heavy, heavy as hell, dude. So yeah, probably not. But yeah, that's. Like you said, that home thing. I, I think that's why our clientele really fucks with us because I feel like they feel at home with us. I think that, that's cool. Do you guys do a lot of traveling and visiting other like markets like uh, Austin, Houston? I mean, er earlier we were talking, you were talking about you guys went to this sneaker con in Houston. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you guys do a lot of that traveling just to just to see? We what do it for is out there. Or? I mean, honestly, we don't <laughs> do a lot of traveling. We'd like to. Twenty twenty four, we're trying to go to a few other events. Um, mainly just because you know. Especially this guy, he's a, he's got a family and stuff. So I mean, like normal when we are free, I mean he's off with his guilty, yeah, with the you know <laughs> with the kids and stuff, which I totally get. Um, he's got a full time job. He's got a full time job. He's got a full time job here, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean we, we try as, as hard as we can. We're trying to go to like a bigger city, like a a, a, a New York, a Chicago, L A, because I think that'd be fun with the squad. But yeah, just going to even just going to Houston, it was really cool to see the. I mean, there's definitely a different culture out there. Like you feel it when you go when you get yeah. there in the shops and stuff. It's like, damn, this is different than Dallas. You know what I mean? Yeah, petty cash was great. I yeah. don't think there's. I don't. Maybe there's. I'm not huge into vintage, but I know. I don't know if there's any stores. Um, what's it called? There's one the, in Deep Elm, right? Um, Data here? faded more. Data faded. Yeah, he has some crazy. Yeah, but guy. it was cool to see that Almanier was. Yeah, Almanier was unbelievable really unbelievable cool experience. Vintage stuff there. It wasn't nah. vintage, oh. but it was. Um, it's all. It's a retail store, it's a, a higher end retail store, but it was. It just felt like a, like when I walked in there, like this is a high end shopping. Yeah, it was experience. really the well. The store built. was really well laid out. Everything there was like curated well. Like it just, we walked in and we were all amazed at just how the store looked. Yeah, yeah. We'd love to travel more. We try, but yeah. Also, these we don't. Our our content is really successful in the store. All the content we shoot is either a podcast, which we're here for, and then a vlog, which we're here for. Um, those are very successful for us, and I mean, we we like we'd like to go. The event videos do well for us too, but I feel like that's so repetitive nowadays, dude. Like that's yeah. for the sneaker. I'm not sure if you're familiar with like sneaker YouTube or anything. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, at this point, like basically the clickbait, like stuff that like blows up, is like cashing out 40k at sneaker con. You know what I mean? Yep. And we're not really like that. We don't. We don't. We don't go there and blow a bunch of money. Like we. We just. We. We have a lot of in-store buyouts, so we just buy here and vlog it whenever it comes in. Um, so we yeah, you should go to like. I think we should just, LA but not even for the for no, the event. Just to go, go to event. It, look through the city and get inspired and stuff. And just yeah, like go to Kith. I'd love to go to Kith, like yeah, an actual retail physically store. Physically there, yeah. Stussy, Supreme. Check. Out I agree. All those we need stores, to go get inspiration from those and honestly look see if there's other brands out there that maybe just haven't made it our way. That was something I wanted to ask you too. Um, I mean, the store for me was always my dream. Like the, I've, I, I had for a while, we were selling on our little website that we built on Shopify, and I mean, out of our apartment and stuff. And then when we actually were able to open the first store. I mean, it was a dream come true to me. And then we opened here, and it's been amazing. Very blessed. But for you, I was talking to Raul about this. I was like, I wonder, would you ever want to open like a boutique, like a byway of Dallas boutique? Or are you just interested in like doing the pop to, pop up kind of thing? I, I've had several opportunities to open up a brick and mortar, and um, I was just just fucking scared to do that because of overhead. Yeah. Um, center that you mentioned earlier. I was the original credit director. I was there since day one, since April seventh. Um, sorry, April twentieth, two thousand seven. Wow. Um, when we were in the first original location, that's not where Mockingbird Station is. And I know the trials and tribulations that, you know, Philip Sterling, the original main owner, what he had to go through. Literally, we, I don't think we were paying ourselves for two years. And I know that it, it takes, it takes, it's a lot, it's a lot. And then yeah. you got to sell. And it, there's a lot of things behind that. For me, um, I just, I just, uh, my, my, a goal of mine would be to open a brick and mortar 
in a very like non retail esque type opera like situation. I, damn, like I I, I want to say something, but I can't because I <laughs> it's, you, you got me. Like I can't, but it's I think you make a beautiful there. story. We're, we're, we're t- it's yeah. happening, but, but I didn't say it's happening. I said it's happening. anyway. You can cut anything out that you I yeah, love the, way, just the opportunity to present more product, but the goal for me is not to pollute the like the earth with product. It's more about connecting the city, problem solving. People are like, bro, you're sitting on so much money, blah, blah, I'm like, cool, that's fine, I don't care. I I don't care. I care about being able to walk up to a club or restaurant wearing a fucking hat and then be like, come on in because we feel connected as a culture, as a city. This stuff is easier to me than just opening up a store. But I appreciate the store aspect as there could be some things in the works, but it's very strategic for me. Yeah, Um, I I just, I know if I can help others and look less on myself i'm going to be more successful and from an authentic perspective yeah no know? i was just i was i was just thinking i was like dude you could make such a sick store like yeah i, I know it'd be beautiful but that was a i th- you had said something in that in that statement too that i was i was gonna well i had a question and we talked about this earlier is when the vault first opened matt had like a grand opening tee his first ever tee vault dtx and had old jordan dunking on it right He's only ever reprinted that shirt one time for the one year anniversary, right? And so what do your, I guess exclusivity is maybe not like the the word to use here, but like Matt gets questioned every single day. Are you going to release that shirt again or release that shirt again? Restock it, restock it. Restock restock the shirt. But like Matt's like, no, that was a time and place. We're going to do this other stuff going forward. We're going to continue to evolve. I know with a lot of your stuff, you don't necessarily restock it. It's like, hey, you can either get it now or really never again. So do you th- find that to be valuable? And, and why is that? Why Why do you do that? Well, I too? first started doing that because I was broke. I, by the doubt, started with I had $3.36 in my account, and I was living in New York City. When I moved back to Dallas, I was like, I got to figure something out. But I always I had the idea of by way Dallas. But for that factor is that nobody wants to sit on inventory, say – I printed my first T-shirt. I printed. I graciously, my neighbor, who is an ex-pro skater, who started screen printing, and um, he's we he he gave me a net forty-five on like fifty shirts. I sold those out immediately, and people were like, "Oh, I need more. I need more. I need more." But buyers are liars. Like people will say <laughs> they will buy it. Like people like, "Yo, bro, I need the the four X, three X." I get we have. There's people who want the bigger sizes, but once you put that out there, ghosts, you know, it's like they won't actually buy it. So I I stuck to my guns and saying, I want this to be, I, A, if it's sitting in my house, if it's sitting on the website, if it says available, I'm losing value because it's clogging inventory in my house. It's clogging space in my house. I just need it gone out of there. And so I didn't have like this huge marketing, like strategy of let's just stick to uh, limited edition. I was just very stubborn and very broke, and like I can only afford to do this. I just had to take that money, keep flipping it to the next idea, the next idea, till it got to the point where it's like, I want like, like the, the grand opening T-shirt. If you were gracious enough to actually be here and experience that, you got that shirt. Remember that moment because you were here. If you weren't here, t- too bad. But they'll be <laughs> yeah. there the next time, knowing that you'll never release that shirt. So as, as much as limited edition and all that stuff has been like thrown around retailers everywhere, um, there's got to be a purpose to it. And yeah, I think that it all just makes sense to just to keep the consumer wanting to experience more and coming back for the next, because there will always be another great next product, but you just got to, you know, hop on it. And it's just, it just makes more sense for me. That, that, that is a big thing. I don't think all people realize how much it costs to do a drop especially in the even i mean 100 pieces it's expensive like it is very expensive like it, it, people don't realize there's multiple steps with it again you're on a different level now because of the cut and sew stuff but even just for us just the screen printing the blank and like even the even down to the tags like it's you know a couple dollars a tag or like a dollar a tag like it it, it adds up and um for me like like what kind of what daniel said i want to be on to the next shit i want to drop i i don't want to invest money because it's a lot i don't want to invest my money into stuff I've already put out. I want to go put something new out, something new, exciting, something to maybe reach a new person. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not worth it to me to 
put another thou few thousand dollars into a drop that's already happened. I want to put my money into a completely new thing yeah. and constantly be dropping new exciting product. That's just the restart. And it, it, it's tough too. Cause like when you have people asking you, Hey, I want to rep your stuff. You know, Hey, I want to, I want to rep your shit. I want to buy your merch. It's very hard to be like, well, shit, do I restock it? You know I mean? People are like begging me to wear my product. That's very difficult. Like to, to basically say no to, you know, or to ignore. So like, that's something I have a lot of trouble with is like, I always ask the guys, dude, should we restock it? Should we drop it? Like, but I want to put that money to new shit. You know what I mean? I think that's he, the only time. That's the only time you've ever restocked something was on the re grand yeah, opening. Yeah, yeah, that was the only time. Yeah, of the new store. I put so. so much money into that. Oh my god, dude! I put a bag into redropping all those. But tees, we were dude. we were talking on the phone the other night how you had three other designs yeah, that are coming out planned. that he's laid out. Like, hey, this is the next thing I want to do, and then this and this. So I get why you're like, I don't want to like keep yeah, going back, go back to, to this that, original yeah. tee. Like, I have so many other crazy things that I'm working on. That are even more exciting. Yeah, they're even cooler. Because I feel like every time we get we get better, I don't feel like we're going back. You know what I mean? Like, I want to put my money into something that I think is, this is this is cooler. Like, fuck yeah. that. Let's, let's look, like, wait, just wait till... Give me a second. Let me, let me show you what we're putting out. It's, it's worth the wait. People want what they can't have, and unfortunately, you can't always... Um, you shouldn't always cater to people's opinion. Just do you. People will, they'll, I don't want to say they'll forget about that last shirt, but just if you're on the same consistent plane, it, it will, they will keep following you and it, it'll, it'll all work out. Yeah. Yeah. That's just something I struggle with, man. Cause it, it really is hard. Like every time, like I see a million, Hey, you guys going to restock the shack tea? I'm like, dude, like I love that shirt and I, I love that you guys are asking for it, but damn dude, like I, I want to do new stuff. Yeah, but yeah. Bear with us, guys. I promise you, guys. You, we got some cool <laughs> stuff lined up. That was another thing. I was about. I was about to ask too. Like Daniel just said. Uh, I mean, I try to. I try to like plan it out. How far in advance do you plan a dropout? Like, so I mean, you got. Like, are you planning your, your fall and winter stuff in summer, or like how far out are you planning your stuff? I dropped the fashion calendar a long time ago because everybody was pushing this. Okay, you got to design fall winter. Oh, so, okay, so what are we in? We're in like fall, winter right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be designing spring two, fall one for 2024. Now mm -hmm. there's no damn way I have the capacity. I don't care. I don't. I'm am not. I'm not trendy, but I'm trend aware. I don't care about these like cadences that other brands do because there's like one or two people that like that work that do by way of Dallas. I just I I don't. Um, Shit spark like it, it'll attack my mind at two a.m. I wake up, <laughs> design stuff, because yeah. it's 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 um, it's hard and it's probably not really good advice at all. What I'm about to say, but I just <laughs> I do not have that capability to like plan so far. I don't know what I'm doing in fifteen minutes, and I love that. I love living in a space like that because of the fact that I, I always want to be able to pivot. I have so many design, so many things. I have shit in my garage that I've. Nobody's ever seen ever because I'm just not ready to release it or I'm just like not, I'm just, I just, I just do things at when I can. And I was able to figure out at one point in my life, like just, you can only, it's, I'm completely up to myself. I got to just do it when I want to do it. And it's been, it's worked so far, you know, but when it comes to like a collaboration, I had a great call with the Dallas Mavericks today, like our, like a millionth call. We are doing the collaboration again that releases either late February or early March. And, but you have to be scheduled. You have to fall into a schedule because yeah, now you're like working that, yeah, with a big yeah. organization. But even still, um, I make sure that I take care of like my mental capacity and just let them know like, listen, this is not easy, but it's, I still, I, I adhere to this, to their schedules, our s collective schedules, just so we can make it a, like a make successful happen, collaboration. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's like, I, I, I kind of just do what whenever, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, like, I, I have my stuff planned, but then something else is going to pop in my head probably, I'm going to drop that instead of this one that I had planned, you know what yeah. I mean? But yeah, I, I definitely get that. That 2 a.m. thing, too. I always, like, right before I either fall asleep, something pops in my head, or in the shower. Those are the two things where I'm like, I'm going to... That just thought I just thought of that. <laughs> you Definitely. know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I gotta put that in my notes or something. I yeah. keep my phone because I listen to music while I'm in the shower. There's so many times when it comes to like for work stuff, it'll be 9 yeah. p.m. taking a shower, and I'm like. Oh my god! Yeah. I should do this, and I yeah. like jump out of the shower, type, type it on my phone real quick, because I'll forget <laughs> it if it if I don't write it something down. Yeah, immediately it's gone. Yeah, my mind's so all over the place yeah. nowadays. Man. So many my coworkers get so many random texts at 10 p.m. at night. Be like, I had this idea. What if we approached it 
this way, you know, <laughs> yeah. all the time. So I think it, I, f- I feel you on that. Yeah. So what's next for you guys? Like, what's a big um, what's what's something that you guys are really looking forward to with the next maybe short term, mid term, or long term type goal? Man, um, get more content out for sure. I yeah. mean, our, our people want it bad. <laughs> like we 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 do we we were limited to one drop a week. Kind of the same thing with the clothes. Like we didn't want to oversaturate it because again, I, I'm a big quality over quantity guy. Um, so like. I don't want to put out a bunch of BS. I want to put out a decent, like a like a, a respectable amount of good stuff, just constant, consistent, consistently. I don't like yeah. just constantly throwing out BS. This guy's never going to put out BS, but never, <laughs> yeah, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> but try not to. Yeah, but like I want, but I just <laughs> what, what I mean more in a sense is uh, obviously the editing and everything's going to be amazing. But I just mean in a sense of like entertaining content. So definitely getting more content out for sure because we, we were yeah. what we were we were doing one video a week. Yeah, I'd and, love to do more. And then for the month of December, we did. Uh, double uploads every every weekly. every week oh, wow. and we noticed a big jump in our views and the subscribers and we we're like all right so yeah i mean the algorithm loves doing it. something is is your goal like the content that you push would it be ever would you ever thought about like how can how can you guys win like a like a, not to be a part of a film festival but how can you be like the first like re, re just, i don't even want to say just resell just how can you be the first retailer to be a part of this like Will you ever get it like an, it's a goal to be like have like a Netflix like a uh, series or something? <laughs> I'd be so sick. Because you have the person that you just have. Are, are you thinking that level or is it yeah. just? Yeah, it's funny. It's crazy. My parents always give me that example like, oh, Pawn Stars, like kind of thing. It's like similar. <laughs> That's but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's crazy that you said that, man. It's like you read my mind from like months ago because I was thinking of like, what if we did something like this? Like, uh, I don't know if you watched the videos round two. Um, they, they big inspiration used, for us by the way like yeah, huge, 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 inspiration. huge inspiration they used to drop two hour videos and it was entertaining from start to end dude yeah so we were I, in my mind i was like it'd be really cool if like uh we could do something on that caliber and then also another big influence for me is uh casey neistat he's a filmmaker in new york and, yeah, I, yeah. and his show i think it was just about him and his brother on their adventures or whatever and hbo picked it up and he made like millions of dollars and I was like, you never know where you this will go. Know. You never know. So yeah. that's why we're, we've been super consistent. Uh, I try to put out quality stuff and I was just like, well, I try to not to like, it's almost scary to think that far ahead or yeah, that, for sure. that big. Um, but I was like, if we could grow to that level, I'm already mentally preparing for it. Nice. So. But yeah, uh, that that's something that it's crazy that you said that, man. Because I'm like, I thought this was just me in my head, <laughs> a month ago, just thinking about that stuff. But I guess it's not so crazy. Oh yeah, that'd be sick. I mean, aside from the content, um, merch, obviously, would, I talked to you about it. I mean, the big the big goal for me here is, worst case scenario, shoes become a little bit dead. You know what I mean? I mean, I think I feel like we're already on that kind of like trend where they're not as popular as they were. Uh, appreciate that. And uh, <laughs> the the um vintage clothing it's steady the hype clothes it's steady i mean i think everyone's always going to want to enjoy what they have on you know what i mean there's always going to be that person maybe not everyone but you know there's always going to be that that clientele that like care about what they're going to they want to wear so i think well the shoes and stuff will always be steady but something that like would be so amazing to me is if like i think volume wise our merch is probably like i was talking to you about is already like our best selling thing like volume wise but like if we could like sell more merch than anything like like uh money wise too that would be so insane to me like for the for us to like be able to just fully fall back onto the brand and like maybe if we were able to just start doing pop-ups in places where a bunch of lines would come out and you know like being retailers like that would be so insane to me like that that's definitely a goal for me is just to keep continue just growing the brand because it's hard man it's it's a it's a it takes a lot of time and brain power and effort and money <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, like well, even like growing the product that you sell like you've mentioned earlier off camera like cutting so stuff Maybe that, you get yeah, into, I mean, I'd love to get into that. People always talk about the Stussy pants. You guys are on, maybe if you made your own Some sort of pants, yeah, cargos pants, and stuff like that. You made a jacket, a rain jacket or yeah. something or a bag or like things of that nature. Continue to grow the brand because I think the demand will always be there for vintage yeah, yeah. and the sneakers and stuff. Whether if, it's whether it's if it's on a higher low. It's yeah. been crazy the last couple of years as far as the demand and the market for everything. But I think something that will stand the test of time is creating a brand. Yeah, creating a brand. Yep. You look at Supreme. Supreme 
has always been popular yeah. ever since it came out. And that it went to its peak probably and it came down a little bit. It's probably going to go back. It'll up. go back. Yeah. Just... But it's just that brand is so strong and has been to, been there for so long that they're always going to exist. They just got to figure out, okay, how do we evolve? Yeah. So we stay relevant. Have you guys seen the um, documentary called All the Streets Are Silent? Mm -mm. I haven't. I haven't. Oh my God. Uh, it, it is, it, it's a story and it's Supreme is heavily in a part of this documentary it in it but it talks about this culture that was kind of just basically going to street where it all came from skate culture street yeah. where all this stuff but i really encourage you to watch this and it really can inspire the shit out of you of like knowing that what you're doing right now is you're doing it correct because it's coming from an authentic place but those guys just were just friends and they were just just doing them and it became bigger than they expected there's a movie called kids if you guys have ever seen the movie kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah look larry clark did back like a part of, that's a part of this documentary um and it's just a very great raw look at people who these these this small community they just kept just doing them and they their friends supported and it was just it just starts from somewhere and it does cutting slow is not as hard as you think because you just have to just jump into it and um it's getting a lot easier like minimums all those things but i would love to see you fulfill that yeah you know, that's a big and, thing and make me, the man. pants shit send these pants straight to a factory and have them say copy this silhouette exactly because everybody else is the same thing anyway obviously you're not gonna have the stussy logo you'll yeah. have vault the v, logo yeah, yeah. or it, whatever it is just it is what it is and um that's just how it works but i would always encourage just to just go for it and just don't even think about failing at all like that's the worst thing we can do in our minds is like thinking negative like it'll work out you know fuck yeah. it we don't even know who's gonna be the next president i don't even care <laughs> but i'm gonna get mine and i'm gonna have a good time no matter what you know it's just it is what it is well i guess i'll ask you that same question back what do you have you know what's what's your next step to goodness gracious um beginning of the year i did a little small little uh capsule collection for naomi osaka tennis player her return to tennis mm -hmm. which is Damn, she lost the other day at, in the Brisbane Open, but Australian Open is when she's making her big comeback. That was a great way to start the year. That's not by way of Dallas consumer pacing. It was literally just for seeding for like, I think like on her list, like, like LeBron, things like that. So it was really cool to know that I was able to do the production. Shout out to Gabby Goldberg, who's her, her uh, creative director who lives in Dallas, moved from, she's from Argentina, moved from LA to Dallas. And just knowing that this woman who worked under LeBron and uninterrupted like in our community and she's just incredible. Um, Mavericks collaboration, Cowboys collaboration, um, a really crazy 7-Eleven project we're doing, really crazy. Uh, I haven't replied, well, I haven't, we haven't gotten things moving with Dave and Buster's as dumb as that sounds, <laughs> but I love it because it's so dumb, but we're gonna, we're gonna solve the salute problem that they have. Um, shit, what else? Um, Texas Rangers, they have the all-star game coming this year mm -hmm. to Arlington. Mm -hmm. And I, I we're, what we're pushing for our presence there is not trying to take over anything. It's more about trying to get more culture and color into the ballpark in, in diversifying the crowd. And ML, we had a great call to MLB today on pushing that. They, I think I told you guys earlier, whenever, um, we had a call with MLB two, a year and a half ago, and the Rangers lost damn near 100 games, and they saw the logo, the Texas logo with Byway Dallas, excuse me. They, like, throwing up. They're losing their fucking minds. <laughs> but then whenever today's call, the energy was a lot different. They're like, this is amazing, you know? So it was really cool to see that they understood what we were trying to do. Um, there's, there's a lot of uh, really fun things. I'm trying to just, just, just have a good time this year and just um, – be a resource for somebody when i was growing up i was looking for somebody like myself who was who was a creative person who probably wore a hat every day wear dumb shirts like you don't have to be as corporate fucking design like you don't have to be this person that our parents try to tell us to be there's somebody out there who is pushing and doing things on their own terms and can be somewhat successful and i'm just trying to be that for any other kid out there who's like I don't know what I want to do, whatever. Like, let I just want to be that inspiration, you know. Yeah. And it's less about me; it's more about those those people who are just trying to figure things out. Yeah, just have fun with it. Going back to that uh, Rangers uh, collab, I don't think they know, uh, but 
you dropped that in a very creative way. Can you tell them about it? Absolutely. And I'm going to give all credit to Jose Garcia, who is the multicultural manager or director with the Rangers. And after we got off that call with the MLB, and they were like, nope, you can't do this. By the way, Dallas in this t- the vintage tee, he said, fuck that. We're going to do it anyway. We're going to do it because he has that same like thing that I have. It's like, we'll, we'll ask for forgiveness later. Just, just, we're not going to die. Like, yeah. we'll just do it. So anyway, he came up with the idea of like, actually, if we can't sell this online, this jacket, let's sell this with a ticket. So you, yeah. so the Rangers That's were sweet. the worst damn, the worst team in the MLB. Yep. And um, my goal or initially when we first met with the Rangers was like, I'm tired of going to the ballpark and just seeing all white people. I'm black. I love baseball. How can we bring our culture community to to the ballpark? Yeah. And so he, we, we, as we continue to talk about these, and Jose was like, "Guess what? What if we? The only way you can get this jacket is if you purchase a ticket to a game, and that then you have access. So it was like a loophole that the MLB couldn't touch. So basically, the jacket was free, but the ticket was 170 dollars or something like that. So I was like, "Oh, damn, that's genius." But instead of doing like a big, easy market game like a Yankees, I said, let's do another horrible team coming in town on a Wednesday night in the middle of the, <laughs> the middle of the week when nobody's thinking about baseball. And um, it was so cool to see. I mean, I got text messages from one of my greatest friends, Tommy J, who works at Center. He had never been in a baseball game in his life. And he was texting me. He was like, bro, I, I'm sitting. He was sitting in the stands wearing the jacket. He was like, bro. I need to come to more games. I need to, and, and it was just forcing that initiative on people to see who's going to show up. And it was kind of very an asshole thing to do, and we weren't meaning it for that. We just really wanted people to come with purpose, and we used the, the obviously the apparel as like a carrot on a stick of like, <laughs> you can only get this if you come, and it pissed a lot of people off. But it is what it is, and it really worked very well. And um, the next year we won the fucking World Series because of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just I think that I think that is why. Well, that, it, it that, that that's crazy that you say that too because um, uh, I was telling them that I checked to see if you know we could still like get anything online now. I think it's after the Rangers won the series that blue jacket sold on Grailed for five hundred dollars. <laughs> that's crazy. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about your stuff reselling? It just it it, it um I wish people would. Well, in my mind, <laughs> like keep the jacket, give it to your kid. That kid gives it to their kid. But I get it. There's people who are trying to, and it's great, like to take advantage of people who didn't get to experience that. Make your money however you want to. I get it. Um, it's got to be flattering. It's like to a certain extent, it's got to be like wow. Like, well, the things I put myself in the position of me looking for that jacket and like five hundred bucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fine, here it is. Now I can't eat for two weeks. <laughs> so it just brings this anxiety back because yeah. I used to be that probably me that guy. But I, I, it is, I guess it is actually yeah. kind of flattering knowing that people would value that at that perspective. So yeah. it's, it's cool. That's, a, that's, yeah, I mean, when you have that, that sort of demand, that's got to be a crazy feeling, man, for sure. Raul yeah. was telling me that he went to one of your, your recent drop in the line yeah. was, uh, the one that you did at the zine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, zine Fest, yeah. I waited in line for like an hour and a half and, uh, I thought I got there early <laughs> and, uh, the line was huge and, uh, Shout out to my wife and my kid. They they stuck by me and we got the we got the sweatshirt. <laughs> but I was just amazed. I'm like, it, it it was after the fair closed and then the fairgrounds, I think they had something else going on too. Yeah. But to see that many people waiting and then just like talking and making friendships in the line was I was like, I think this is what it's all about. I'm so glad you said that because when we did our first our pop up last February, we really what we want people we don't want people to wait in line for hours right mm-hmm. but the amount of stories we heard about people from two different completely different parts of, of dallas connecting and having this camaraderie and having conversations with each other and literally following up and hanging out afterwards That's just because so they sweet, met yeah. in line yeah there's a very specific story that happened to me and man i almost fucking broke down um because this this dude this kid emailed me no sorry this lady emailed me and she showed up to this bar and she was wearing like one of this, these this cranberry hoodie that we released like a couple few years back, few, few years back. And she said, Hey, it was a picture of her and this other kid. She was a Highland Park mom. There was this other kid. He was Hispanic. He was young, wearing the same hoodie. And I always tell people in like initial meetings, like the goal for me is like, say there's, say there's a hallway and there's two people walking down this blank hallway. Most of the time, 90, 
nine percent of the time we're just gonna walk past each other but if you're wearing a byway of dallas piece you there's a chance you're gonna stop yeah. and talk and have a conversation it's like oh you're wearing that too whatever and that should happen when she sent this email because you've got this highland park looking soccer mom and this this other younger kid who may go to skyland whoever but they're wearing the same piece they're arm in arm at a bar and they never met and they're smiling and they we're happy to send me this photo. It's like, that is exactly why I do this. I'm trying to connect both sides to 75. So with that, that's happened to all of our pop-ups where people are starting to have a conversation and it's it's so rewarding. And that whole pop-up was so last minute. I didn't even mean to release that, that, yeah. that this crew neck right here. Yeah. It was, that's been sitting in my garage for a very long time. It was supposed to be for a, a Foot Locker collab and I was never gonna release it. I was gonna, never release it and i had like over eight eight hundred pieces in my garage sounds dumb right <laughs> but last minute my zine that was actually supposed to be printed didn't get printed i'm telling you the night before i was like f it and i got a u-haul and i put those crew necks in the u-haul and i released them that day and i was never going to release it that's crazy just because i'm like weird and stubborn i don't know it was but it, it was very cool to to see people and i appreciate you coming out oh yeah man know? yeah it was i feel like now remembering how you released it i think it was a little bit sudden yeah and i was like and we didn't even eat breakfast man i was like yeah, I we gotta be the only way to get this yeah, the way like, we gotta go and um because there's so many pieces that you've dropped to and i either was busy or was working uh the is it it's the is it the skyline sweatshirt yeah I, yeah I didn't get that one but that one was one of my favorites that you dropped and I think you dropped that one in Deep Elm, didn't you? It was it was in uh, East Quarter, but East Quarter, kind of yeah. right right by Deep Elm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I tried to send some people out there, but they weren't going. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, just to see like that many people out there, I was like, that's insane, man! It's like the brand is still going strong, and I feel like it's just growing and growing. Do you feel like it's like a, a secret club in Dallas, or it's just like I, I I don't I don't kind of kind of, but it's it's more just because I don't post really that much at all. Yeah. I don't care about algorithms. I don't care about, oh, you got post once every week. And I personally, I know the value of that. I just don't have time to do it. And yeah. it's just, I'm very particular about everything that I post has to be quality content. So it, it really drives a lot of people nuts. It drives me nuts knowing that I'm so inconsistent, but <laughs> it just works because it's really my perspective and I'm yeah. that's just who I am. And I'm gonna do things at my own pace. Um, I almost like literally Pat died. I was in the uh, ICU not this past July, the July before that, because I was overworked, working myself, having a full-time job. I was a creative director of this Slam magazine in New York City. I was doing all these things. I ran myself to the ground, and I had to be like, you know what? Screw this. Like, I got to take care of yeah. myself, and I, I just, I'm going to do things at my own pace. So I just always remember, I gotta, you know, that's just what it is. Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. I, I, f I feel like, you know, with, at a, certain time a point uh last year i had so many clients and people i was shooting for editing for and i was like i'm barely getting any sleep man and i feel <laughs> terrible and i feel like my my work was like starting to go down so like i i made time and i'm still working on it today but um you know you feel the difference when you you have the time to do what you want how you want it yeah. i feel like that's very important for sure absolutely and that's even for all of you guys like this stuff is really, it's very fortunate to this be a, like a, a, a business. And like, this is just, it's crazy that just the basis on sneakers can, can be, create everything in the future, but it's got to take time for yourself you yeah. know, to eat, rest, sleep, all that stuff. Because yeah. the day, the day it becomes work <coughs> is when it's like, you know, I mean, you need to have fun doing what you're doing, and yes. that's a big thing for me personally. I guess the same thing with what you said. You can't wear a hat to work. You start getting, you start <laughs> feeling like you were like yeah. you're working. It's like, what am I doing? Well, Absolutely. you know, you you get 80 years if you're lucky on this planet, and you get, dude, you got to do what you like. You know, what I mean, it's, I, I've and I, you you said something earlier about the the money thing. Like, yeah, and I know there's other opportunities that I could make more money, but I'm comfortable doing what I'm doing. I'm I I live extremely happy. I'm love my guys here. Like, this is literally what I feel like I was born to do, man. Like I, yeah. I have so much fun. Another thing, piggybacking off that little, that line, that little line talk that you had. I feel like we kind of get that too. Cause we do what, what, what we kind of do here is like a once, once every actually happened today. Um, once every month we do a, once the first Friday of every month we do a steals thing and we'll just get a bunch we'll kind of just hoard a bunch of pairs for the whole month for the next month. 
and just drop them at like stupid prices, just like exciting prices, you know, to a point where people will line up. That's nice. And that's insane to us that people are lining up. But yeah, to where he's making twenty bucks on each. Yeah, pair. breaking even, Buys losing it money. For Fifty sells it for yeah. sixty bucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something like just, just, just something to get my customers excited. But it happened a couple drops ago, and I feel like it's happened almost every one now. But it happened a couple, maybe our second or third one where we did that. Um, these kids were out here all night for these shoes. And I mean, to me, it's really important because like I grew up with Logan, like camping out for these shoes, like having like going to center and camping out for these shoes, like <laughs> camped out for the shadows. That's like one of our big stories that we have here. Like I camped out for the shadows 15 hours for that shoe, stayed outside all night, mm. camped out for Fear of God Vans at Galleria. And I added people on Snap and got people's numbers that I s literally still follow to this day. And like all through shoes is crazy. But yeah, I saw it happen with these kids outside. Like they were just some kid brought a spike ball net and they were literally just playing outside, oh, like yeah. having fun. And then after they came and checked out, they got the pairs. They were like, oh, what pair do you want? They grabbed, they checked out the pairs and they kind of moved over here and they're like, what's your snap, bro? What's your snap, bro? Like making that memory yeah. of that at the vault is like so special to me, dude. Like the fact that they're going to probably remember that, maybe not for the rest of their life, but for the next 10 years where the, they're going to be telling their friends, oh yeah, I can't, I, or their kids, oh yeah, I used to, I camped up at the store at the vault when I was 15 and yeah, I met this guy and you, you never know, you know what I mean? You might be making never. friends for the rest of their lives. You never know, but it's all connecting people. Sure. I feel like the product gets a bad, sometimes this product gets a bad rap nowadays. It's associated with a lot of people that are very like ego driven and like only, you know what I mean? Just are only wearing this because they want, ha want to have a certain image to the outside world. But like when you're able to get a product and connect two people that may have never met in their lives before, that's a very powerful thing that's to me. Valid. Like that's yep. beautiful, dude. Like that, I don't know. That shit was so cool to me. When I saw them, like after they checked out, they're like, "What's your snap, bro?" I was like, "Dude, that's like, that to me meant more than anything." You know what I mean? To than, to selling any parachute for any amount of money, like that is so cool. Absolutely, it's good karma too. Like knowing that there's that opportunity for for that positive purpose. It's like they're gonna, you know, tell other people about their experience in there, and just gonna just bring more of a potential consumer for you. you yeah, because I mean, at the end of the day, this is all this. This is all this. This is rubber, cloth, mesh. I mean, what's the real value to it, right? Moments, like memories, like that's that to me is like, I made so many memories in here that I'll never forget. Like, and then that the fact that they made me might might have met someone or made a memory that they'll never forget to me that is like surreal, dude. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. at the end of the day, this stuff is worthless. I mean, in a in a in a sense of like, what do you need it? No, it's that's worthless. Good. Yep. It's it's just, but like being able to make memories through product is insane to me. That's. Whenever you said that, that was the first thing I thought in my house. I was like, wow, that's happened to us too, which is so sick. That's awesome. Yeah. One question for you. Everything, obviously everything's very Dallas focused, right? On a couple of the Rangers pieces here, you have coordinates on the sleeves. Yep. Are those a certain location in Dallas? Especially, is it the ballpark? Is it, so where do those coordinates lead? The coordinates on the Rangers jacket differ from the coordinates on the Mavericks jacket. They differ from the coordinates on the, on the Cowboys stuff. And, and the Cowboys points to uh, the 50-yard line, Maverick Center Court, Rangers is um, home plate in Arlington. Okay. So That's super cool. Part of our IP, part of the original IP of Byway Dallas were coordinates. Mm -hmm. And those coordinates that I pointed to point to a specific place where I almost lost my life um, outside of what I just mentioned, the IC used to Guys, probably think I'm crazy. Like this guy was, what's going on? <laughs> but it was, it's a point where I'll never forget. And I, I use, utilize that moment, that time to help build the brand just so I didn't personally forget. So if you ever like Googled, like I had, there's several jackets I've released in the past that have just those basic Byway Dallas coordinates, points to a place that is really nothing but a parking lot. But it's like, to me, that's something that just helps me be a reminder of like, you never know. Just, just, just keep doing what you do, whatever. So, um, that's a great question, though. But we utilize those coordinates just to help. You know, just graphically, it's cool, but right. also it, it points to a particular destination. And partners really love that opportunity to own their own coordinates for for particular pieces. It's cool. I love when not only something looks cool, but you can tell a cool yeah, story su super, with yeah, it. Yeah, like there's some stories. substance to it, rather than just like. Oh, it's a dope graphic. Oh, there's some numbers on yeah. it. We need some. We need something on the sleeves. Let's throw the this of this on there. But like, yeah, yeah. There's an actual story behind it. I, I think that's awesome. That's super sick. You guys should look up the coordinates. This spot. I mean, it's it's cool. You know, that's actually yeah. That's, that'd be pretty sick. About that, yeah. Something I guess similar we've done on the Back to the Future T. Um, the graphic that we kind of 
took homage from it's it had the destination time back to where they had a um at the top of the t it had the destination time to where the um obviously in the movie they went back to and ours we just put it back to our original grand opening at the last shop mm. so some, something similar did you know there's a new back to the future movie coming out i heard that yeah, yeah. one yeah. of our one of our like big ho- one of our homies in here that comes to the shop all the time is like a huge back to the future guy and he was telling us about that jacob shout out jacob um but yeah he was telling us about that i saw that apparently tom holland was going to be uh marty no kidding. Apparently, right? That's what wow. Jacob was saying. I think that'd be. I, I can see that. I think that'd be good. Be Tom Holland budget, for sure. <laughs> I think he'd be a good Marty. <laughs> yeah. I, I I think that's a really good fit. Honestly, I don't know who's gonna play Doc, but I think Doc's gonna play Doc. Maybe. Really? Well, not the. From the preview I saw, it was it was Doc. What's his name? I forget his name. Um, damn. Yeah, I don't. I don't know his name. I, I don't know his name. Yeah. But it, it was and and Michael J. Fox. Was in it too, but that doesn't mean because it's, I don't know, there's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be some plot. Yeah, apparently that's what Jacob was saying. That'll be really cool, I think. I love Back, Fe- Back to the Future, man. That's cool. Uh, I, that's right on right on time. Right yeah. On. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Get a DeLorean parked in here. Yeah, oh, that'd be <laughs> sick. That'd dude. be insane. <laughs> if you would have had a DeLorean parked outside during the drop. Dude, I'd love, I'd love to do some crazy, like, you know, that's just not my budget at the moment, but like one day to do some, like, <laughs> some crazy, uh, you know, promos like that because like i think your drops are super sick you do like that rangers ticket thing that's something i wouldn't even think of like that's something i, I want to work on too is getting more creative in the terms of like the rollout of my my drops because that's i think just putting the shirt out on a website oh drops at 11 a.m i mean that's easy as hell like making it creative in a way that not only your customer can engage with it but it almost makes it like a hunt and exciting for them yeah that is super sick that's something i would love to do I mean that, that that's that's just like stuff that's so creative, man. Like that's you had to have been there yeah, in the moment. Like that's amazing. Yeah, that's super like, cool. I'm a big Star Wars guy, huge Star Wars guy, big Disney guy. I went to the grand opening of the Star Wars area at Disney World. Yeah, and they had a T-shirt on sale. It was grand opening had the date on it and everything. It was only sold that day. Yeah, you could only buy it that day. It's like a size large. Doesn't fit me anymore. But it's still in my drawer. I'm never going to get rid of it because it was such a great memory I had with some friends. Exactly. So yep. I don't know if the vault would ever consider something like, hey, you've, you've got to be here at this day at this time to get it kind of peace. But I, I, just, I would love to do some stuff like that. That's one super time cool. at Center, billions of years ago, we were releasing like the Jordan 1 Carolina Blue. And we went as far as we knew the shoe was going to sell out. Like right. The 2015 pair? Right? What, 2015? Probably, yeah, 2015 yeah, yeah, yeah. pair. We did this thing in store where... Um, like one of my good friends, she was a personal chef, and we figured out we like did the research. Research like, what did Michael Jordan eat? What does he eat before games? <laughs> we broke it down to like this steak, like a make was it like a milkshake. It was something, but we figured out what his meal was, and she made miniature versions of that meal for a raffle. People came to the shop, ate these mini like steak bites, had all the food, you know, samples just to put them in that perspective. The shoe was gonna sell it regardless. Yeah, 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 yeah. But people love to, they love. It's engaging. Showing up, it was yeah. like very engaging. Yeah. yeah, and it was it was it was a huge waste of time, a huge waste of budget, but it was just fun. You that's know? sick. Yeah. Oh, that's super that's dope. Awesome. Fun. Wow. If you make it exciting for your customers, I feel like they get more attached to the brand. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You, you make it something that they can like actually interact with. It's just like a whole other element to the to, to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's Absolutely. super. That's that's really. Well, it serious. drives excitement. It's like they did this for this drop. Yeah, yeah. What are they going to do, do for the next one? The next yeah. one? Yeah, exactly. and that's the problem because then you got to like because then you gotta, yeah, yeah, keep doing something. You got to re up yourself every time. Yeah. Yeah, that's. But Nike loved things like that. Our rep loved knowing we were going an extra mile just to create more energy. Probably damn near doing it better than what they were doing at that time. Um, but it just got it's way too out of budget. Out of yeah, yeah. Like, just right. release the shoe. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Do s- yeah, yeah. So obviously you're collabing with a whole bunch of people and organizations. But how many people are like in your creative circle? Like, is it just a one man show, or how? Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again because I don't know if the mics in here, yeah. but Eric basically just asked like how big is like Hans's circle and by way of Dallas like, create like his creative circle. In terms of like um, people that work or who do the creative for by way of Dallas, or do you mean just like my friends that are creative? I guess both. Okay. Like who who helps with like the whole thing? Everything that's been posted, everything that's been designed, sourced. It's all me. Like it, it's never. It's always been myself. I just you know um, Trey Green, who has been a godsend. Came from White and Kennedy. Came from Richards Group. He's he's on now, full time as a strategist. I handle all the creative, um, everything that hits the feed, everything that you see that comes out is is from 
my miniature little you know lap MacBook, I'm starting to um, understand I need to uh, delegate and bring on more creatives. The problem is, is I don't trust anybody. <laughs> I just don't like, especially when it comes to creative perspective, because I know how it is. I used to be this that guy who was like, I just, I just, I just know that it, if it doesn't have my touch, I'm horrible at teaching people how to do anything. The worst. So I'm just a little bit stubborn in the sense of I should bring on three more creatives, but I don't. I think it's it'll be harder for me to try to explain to them what I'm trying to do, and it just it'll just take a lot more time. But I'm gonna get there. As far as my creative circle outside of like within by Dallas, but like it's it's very very few. Um, I mean, I literally I have a phone right here, but on January 19th, this phone number won't work because I got I'm getting rid of my phone again. I've done this a few times. And I, had, I didn't have a phone for two years, and it's because I know I got my kid. I got I got what I like. I'm just got to do me. The creative circle is is very small. One of my best friends, Johnny Lucio, Jordan Rogers. There's, there's some people who are there in my world, but other than that, I just I just I just I don't I can't um, I don't have the capacity anymore to really be a part of the bigger creative community, even though I know it's valuable. It's just harder for me. I think ADHD uh, is a huge problem for me too. My dad's a my dad's an entrepreneur too. He owns his own business, and uh, I mean, I'm blessed to have a group of dudes that do care. But at the end of the day, nobody will care as much as you do. Right? You know what I mean? I mean there's literally it just it, that's just what it is. You know what I mean? It's just nobody will put as much attention to detail, as much effort, as much energy as you will into your own thing. It's your baby, right? Like yeah. so, like it's I, your I totally name attached to it. It's not yeah. my name. It's yeah, not yeah. Eric's name. It's not Logan's name. Yeah. It's, so I mean, it's your name. At the end of the day, it's very important. Yeah. I think that's where a lot of brands and a lot of uh, stores in general will go wrong is the the original owner will end up leaving and kind of just going out of it. And I think the brand loses its touch. Exactly what you yeah. said. If it doesn't have that touch in it, it's not that special. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's got to have it's got to have that original like founders touch like i don't know how to, how to explain it but i think a lot of brands fall um fall down because of, like go down because of that stuff the brands of stores in Absolutely. general yeah good great great analogy yeah that's, that's very true and great question appreciate that the um, <laughs> speaking of people you work with we've got to ask um I'm, I'm sure you figured this question was coming i mean you're, you're known for working with virgil i mean i we've we've got to ask like how how was that you know i mean how was it meeting with him and just are you even talking to him in general like we've got to, you know we, we've got yeah, to ask yeah, yeah, you feel me and it's with all due respect yeah with all due respect like, and i i um this is probably one of the only times i've ever publicly spoke about this and um i was talking to you the other night about the situation um and it was all by chance it's all by just i've been ex i've been had the opportunity to be in front of a lot of cool people you know uh and I've, I've been very close to Virgil so many times, like literally standing behind him at the Yay concert in Brooklyn at the Barclay. <laughs> literally, he's standing right in front of me. Matthew Williams here, here in wow. person. Kardashians literally behind me. <laughs> Shit like that. Uh, Travis Scott is over here. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And it's like, um, I'm like, oh, this is cool. Whatever, whatever, you know, whatever. Go get on the train, go back to my house, whatever. Um, but this moment with Virgil was... Um, I, I always say everything happens for a reason. And how it kind of started was I was at my house. Oh, I'm sorry. I was in Ibiza, Spain, which is very random. And I was I was working for an athleisure brand uh, based in New York City. I was designing women's <laughs> swimsuits for, at the time. And got a call. And it was basically like, okay, we'll take, let's put Virgil to the side for a second. Yeah, yeah. Got a call to go meet this lady named Shauna for lunch in Ibiza, Spain, off the coast. And I'm like, all right, I'm, I am I got to just, I'm just going to go, I'll go. So I ended up sitting down. It was me, myself, myself, my sister, and uh, this lady named Shauna. She was at the time, um, she was managing two brother DJs based in the Bronx or something. Why she was in Ibiza? Oh, she was in Ibiza, Spain, because she was also managing like Black Coffee, this other DJ's career. And he, he does a lot of things over in, in Europe. And so we, we, you know, we had lunch, whatever. It was, it was great. Had the connection. Came back to Dallas, and um, I got this call maybe a couple months later, and it was Shauna, and she was like, "Hey, just to let you know, I'm now managing Virgil Abloh's DJ career. Not, yeah. not mm -hmm. he had just started with um, 
Louis Vuitton. Obviously, he had it off white, but it was. I'm now managing his DJ career, and I'm like, holy, this is crazy! Like, yeah. this is incredible. I remember hanging up the phone. My sister was at my house. She, my sister lives in New York City, but she was at my house. Looked at each other, and I was like, got to take advantage of this. And I was like, we I think we texted her back, and it was like, we want to pitch something to Virgil's. She was the manager, so it was yeah, like, yeah. to you. So I, I stayed up all night, created this deck, had this really cool like strategy. Next day, sent it to them immediately. After like eight lawyers looked at it, they were like, "This is really cool. This is really cool." There was it wasn't Virgil saying it, it was the lawyer saying this. Yeah, yeah. And and Shauna. Then we we were like, okay, something something can happen. I think this is like April at the time. We continued to work on this project all year. I, I like didn't do anything else for Bioway Dallas, but I knew that having bringing Virgil to Dallas was the pinnacle of like like this could be fucking epic um he had just dropped this this book i forget it's speech it was this, like the blue book. figures of speech figures of speech thank you he just dropped that book interesting thing about that book is uh rim coolhouse who's an architect was a contributor in that book there's a performance the wiley theater in downtown dallas was designed by rim coolhouse and so i said we got to do this party at, at the wiley theater because there's this easy easy connection to mm -hmm. this contributor to this book virgil so everything started to fall in place, um, and uh, except the budget part of it. <laughs> but we had, I had, I, I, when I tell you guys, I put everything creative in my brain into this strategy. I absolutely did. The only way you can get into this party is if you, we, we, we built like several websites, log on to bywaydallas.com, sign up. We were, we're sent, we sent everybody a disposable camera with a, um, like a chain around it. Like a lanyard kind of lanyard, thing? Lanyard, thank yeah, you. Yeah. I don't know why I couldn't. With a lanyard. Only way you can get in this party is if you had this disposable camera. No ticket, no wristband, none of that stuff. That was the first part of the disruption that we were trying to create. Because my thing was like, I'm tired of going to parties, people pulling out their phone, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put your phone away. We're going to use this disposable camera. You get 27 exposures on this camera. But that's your ticket to get in. That's part one. We also, so you know when you go to the club or the bar and like they have you know, the older woman or the older man selling teddy bears and roses and most people yeah. are like, get away from me. <laughs> we had hired 20 of, of those people who do that to show up at this party to give them away to people. We uh, found this dunk like um, car club and we wanted those parked in the, we had one I think was gonna be parked in the middle of the party, but also outside. And we wanted, we wanted to, and we, ultimately, we wanted to introduce Dallas culture to Virgil. Virgil has never been to Dallas, ever. Really? Never. Well, I, I should say he's never performed in Dallas. I don't know, like, personally, maybe he has soccer, Okay, okay, but okay, performed it. I, I know I'm, I'm just kind of confused. I'm kind of jumping around. But I know whenever we were looking at the schedule of when, like, we got to the point where it was like, okay, when is Virgil's schedule going to, you know, Paris? And a line, yeah. It was August 27th. It was the day the Cowboys had a preseason game. And we hadn't even contacted the Wiley Theater. So I started making all these plans without even like aligning with them. <laughs> the only day Virgil was going to be in the States, he was going from Chicago straight to Miami, was August 27th. I said, lock us in. We called the fucking Wiley Theater. Only day they, we didn't have programming was August 27th. Wow. wow. Check this out. Um, I, I live really close to Erica Badu. I've known her for a very long time. And she's just, she's an incredible woman. Wow. And I called her and, and asked the favors, like, can you please be a part of this thing? She agreed to do it for nothing. And she was like, but my schedule is kind of crazy. What day do you have? August 27th. I said, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I swear, her schedule was everything aligned August 27th. So this this party, what what, what like what was it for? You know what I mean? Like, what, what was, I'm just, I, I'm just, I, I'm just wondering, like, what was it for? Who was it for? You know what I mean? Kind of thing. So great question. What it was originally four was just to just to take advantage of that damn we have virgil as a headliner just to like just have a party like, yeah, yeah, yeah i don't know anything mm -hmm. about partying but i realized realizing that like damn this party is actually my idea was for virgil to, to walk out on the party platform and we were presenting to virgil like this yeah. is dallas we're the party for him i even designed a acrylic dj booth that i spent way too much money on that had live grass on the like live saw it on the inside it was clear and we had this boot this like box is like lit up it was crazy 
And I wanted him to walk out there and be like, what the fuck is going on in Dallas? <laughs> yeah. This is the most unique, yeah. unique, creative, like, I wanted us, not us, like, no, we're DJ. Like, I wanted him to be like, damn, I need to come back to Dallas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's like we were presenting, and it, 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 the party was called the City and County of Culture. That was the first time I really used that term. And so, um, long story, so we had all the T's oh, crossed. Shit, yeah, on the, on the it's on here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I drive with that a lot. All the T's were crossed. All the I's were dotted. Um, there was, there's so many things. Uh, sorry, there's one other thing I really want to mention is that when, once we, like, calculate all the costs with virtual, with flights, with you know, Neiman Marcus donated twenty five thousand dollars. We had all these great sponsors, but it was still like, damn, this ticket's gonna be a four hundred dollar per person ticket. Yeah. And then I looked at myself as if I was like that kid. Say I wanted to be a DJ. I actually did DJ for a while, but I wanted to be. I want to be next. I want to be in this party. I can't afford four hundred dollars. And I said, this party's gonna be free. And, I, and my sister was like, what, hey, what are you talking about? I'm like, I can't charge our consumer this amount of money. And so we figured out the strategy where. We have this VIP level and people like who have that money, like the Highland Park people, we're going to put that cost on them. They want to, they have the money to flex, but yeah. it was like, if you buy this ticket, you're getting somebody like in for free. Mm -hmm. So we figured out the strategy of how to make it free for the public. Everything was covered. And this is where it all came crashing down is, um, also another thing is Erica was going to surprise us by bringing common because Common just so happened to be in town. Wow, yeah. He's going to be, a, and he's from Chicago, so mm -hmm. it was Virgil. I'm talking, everything was perfect. The merch was incredible. Um, it, it all came crashing down when it was a Friday evening when we were supposed to publicly um, announce this to the public. It's like, the lawyers were like, okay, here's the flyer. I had to like design this thing that was aligned with like his consistent branding, and mm -hmm. DJ Sober was, was the headliner. Another surprise moment is that I wanted to bring on, I wanted to surprise an up, up and coming DJ to be able to open for Virgil. And like that was all set. And this kid named Cameron, who was just like, I can't believe this is this is happening. Literally, it was three minutes before Virgil, Erica, and Byway Dallas were gonna post on Instagram to announce the party. Got a call from Shauna's manager, from Shauna, Virgil's manager, and she said, party's canceled. And like my life, like my, world came crashing down because it was the last thing, the worst thing I could ever hear is yeah. my ego at this time. It was a different hand. So I was like, I'm going to be so cool. Everything's perfect. I'm bringing, I'm, I can't wait to get this selfie with him in the dressing room, shit like that. <laughs> but that moment that God was like, this, this is what, this is what needs happens to you because you got overconfident parties canceled and legally Virgil and Shauna couldn't tell us why the party was canceled. Six months later, Shauna called us. Well, then I had to call Erica. She was, yeah. she was like, okay, whatever. I, well, maybe she's mad. I'm not quite sure. Found out that the reason why he canceled because he found out that he, he, he was sick. And he had to cancel not only the Byway Dallas show, he, he had to cancel part of the Louis Vuitton presentations. He didn't do anything else from August until I think – Later that year, and I'm not, yeah. I can't remember exactly when he passed, but it's November, I think. Probably, mm -hmm. she yeah. told us, she said he didn't care about anything else. He's like, This Byway Dallas party was the most thing he was excited about, and he felt so horrible that the doctor said, Stop what you're doing, you need to take care of yourself. But myself, being at that moment, I, I quit design. I was like, I remember, I was like, I just got in my car, I drove, I was like. Not only did I lose over hundred thousand dollars, but I was like thinking so selfishly, not having a clue what this man was going through. I was like, I'm never doing Barry Dallas again. I like damn near wanted to join the military, like go to like Marines. I was like, I don't give a shit. I'm out of here because I was so embarrassed and just so just filled with this like selfishness, not knowing that this man has done everything and he's he just physically he's dying. You know what I mean? And then when I came to the realization that, that this is what was supposed to happen to me, sp sp reignited another, like, it's not about me, you know, like you never yeah. know what people are going through. And so that's, the virtual party never happened. It was three minutes before we we're gonna post, even if we posted and, you know, he could, he still could have been like, no, it's not happening. But it was like that moment where it's like, damn, you, you can reach the sun, it's right there, what you think is valuable but it's really not. And it was like, that lesson was so hard to swallow, but now I really appreciate, I don't appreciate the fact that he, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's obviously passed, but 
it was just like a great lesson for me of like you never know Tone you always down, have yeah. to yeah. Of, just just do you just it's gonna everything's gonna happen for a reason so virtual project never went down um because of that moment but i'm always forever grateful for that cadence and knowing that seeing his emails he didn't even have a phone he had he only communicated on whatsapp and just seeing <laughs> shauna sending me this excitement that he had and and for some he had no fucking clue who i was and and sorry i swear last thing guys last thing about that dude, dude, i was talk walking you want, bro. This is I, was, so interesting. I was in miami for art basel for the swimwear company not because i it was for that swimwear company i'm i'm literally walking by myself walking down this 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 um this like street very unassuming on my way to this activation that we were doing and i'm on my phone and coming down the same street i just just happened to look up usually i'm just like like it was fuck it was virtual and people have always said you look just like that guy people have said that for years <laughs> like are you people come up to me at trade shows complex con i worked the first complex con with complex and kids were coming up to me trying to like autograph i'm like i'm not brutal like chill out like, guys but anyway i look up just so happened he looked at me and it was like that doppelganger like the spider-man meme <laughs> yeah it was just like this and this was before um the, the party was this like this is well before all that happened and that moment i remember when we saw each other i knew like damn all this happens for a reason because i'd seen him in new york i seen him behind at the mm -hmm. gay show we always seen each other but we never spoke and we took a picture and he was so nice he was so cool and he had to go dj something and that moment i was like damn somehow there's this we're gonna something's there's gonna a connection happen. yeah it was like i six months later and all this stuff happened I was in Ibiza with with shauna and all that crazy stuff so that's the virtual story well, that's amazing man that's you know it's, it's crazy like, how it happens though. yeah i mean Just, honestly it's like it's almost like surreal because like you see these people and you look up to them so much and it's like so almost like super superhero-esque and for them to all just basically, at the end of the day, everyone's human. You know what I mean? Everyone can, anyone can die any, at any moment. Your life is so meaningful. Like it's, it's, life is so like fragile. You know what I mean? Like it's just crazy. Like, cause he's just, it, same thing, kind of similar thing to Kobe. You know what I mean? It's just someone you look up to and you're just like a superhero. It's like, you, they're, they're not going to, they're not going to die. You know what I mean? It's world. like, so it's just. It really puts when when when, st when st just it's insanely shocking stuff like that happens. It's like it really puts you. It it makes you think for a second. It's like damn, like and like like you said, there was just it was a very good realization for you. And you were like, am I doing this correctly? You know what I mean? What am I doing wrong? What I mean, this it's 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 humble. It's very humbling. It's like wow. I mean, every every at the end of the day, where anything can happen at any moment. Absolutely, it's, it's crazy, man. Here's this one of the disposable cameras. I called. I literally called huh. the one eight hundred number from Fuji. And got them to donate like 400 of these cameras and I, why they did that they were like you can you open up the uh the thing because i oh. customize every fucking oh, camera dude you um, know what's so great this is so random my sisters are like obsessed with these now i don't know if there's like a trend or something but like yeah, yeah, yeah. they're like going to get like buy oh. these at cvs and then they go to get them printed and like it's like a big thing for their it's, oh this it's is fun. Sick, yeah dude. so that's um awesome. by way of dallas that's yeah that's the that's the culture ticket. at its core i didn't bring the the, the lanyard but um um, oh man that's so that's, sick you got yeah keep that thing but really? it, it was yeah I, oh, i've got a ton I, i'll, I'll shop, bring dude. i'll i'll get you i should have brought more sorry guys that, that's that <laughs> was oh, dude, we'll display it here man thank yeah, you so much that's yeah. so sick dude part, and it's just you know, it's fucking sick dude it was just, it's, it's, it's just fun so again dude like how creative is that whole process of that's even ticket. thinking of that yeah. like how do you well, even... i love that because we i think we talked about this come to like the travis concert. yeah the concert and stuff like yeah. i go to concerts uh, Blink-182 is one of my favorite bands, right? I saw them, I've seen them twice last year. And, you know, I'll, I'll record a little bit of my favorite song. I'll take a couple photos. But then, like, my phone's in my pocket the rest of that show. I'm living in the moment. Like, how want in my life, I've seen them perform three times. I may be able to see them perform one or two more times because they could break up again. And you never yeah. see them again. So yeah. I'm like, I don't want to live that moment through my phone. I want to live that moment, like, in the moment. So I'll take Absolutely. a couple photos, record my favorite song, phones in my pocket the rest of the time because i'll because i'll go to shows and people record every single song like if you really want to watch this live yeah, someone else is getting it on youtube, YouTube. Yeah. exactly you know yeah, for you yeah. to watch like you really, just yeah. be there have fun look like an idiot because you're singing along to every single song <laughs> that's what i was doing everyone's looking at me like who is this guy but i was like you know what i'm here man like I'm i just want to be a part like, of the moment if i go ghostface ray Quan, i'm singing every song <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> you also said that 
they were everybody was going to turn in the cameras right at the end yeah so at the end we were encouraging if you if you sh shot your experience we had like boxes where you just drop that camera well we wrote down your information drop that camera into a, a box with that we we're gonna we, we partner with uh photograph and deep ellum they're like one of the last like places to like still do film development and we were going to release a really cool zine based on people's content we gave virtual a camera we, we gave erica a camera and so you had the opportunity say we selected one of your photos you had the opportunity to be published with virgil then we were going to release that zine so sick, oversized dude. cool zine of content from that night for five bucks four of those dollars out of the five bucks goes to stew pot which is a local uh, food bank for yeah. the homeless wow, that's amazing, so man. it was that content was going to live somewhere and i'm telling you like this is everything we thought of was, yeah you put was, your was, own like you put, everything, put everything into, into this that. but um at the end of the day like, it was just it was just fun knowing that you you know there's purpose to things and you're thinking about it just how can you flex your muscles as much as you can you know yeah it's yeah. amazing man i yeah this just this just this is just so shit. you sure i can have this dude I'm gonna bring you guys more. I, I should have bought more. I have <laughs> okay, 400 in my house. I, right, well, I know it's just so, so sentimental to you. It's like I thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, That's yeah, so absolutely. sick. We'll display that here. Hans gave us a few things. Um, this is the Scottish Rite collab you do. Do you want to talk about this a little bit? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about just quickly the pro the process for this. The basis for this collab was that we, um, you know, kids who unfortunately have uh, a limb difference and wear a prosthesis or prosthetic. They don't have the same opportunities. They don't have this world. You know, we love sneakers. We love certain things. They are, um, you know, they, they have, they're, they're, it's, it's different for them. And so they approached me on how on Scottish Rite's 100th year anniversary, they wanted to do something a little bit different. And I, I, all I care about and thinking about is like, you know, if you see a kid going to school, he's that kid with that, you know, prosthetic leg or prosthetic, he's like, in my mind, it's like he might be the weird kid to other kids, yeah. you know, bullying all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Right. I said, kids we're gonna, we're, let's try to, how can we, how can we flip this on its head? So I wrote a program where, it's, and we figured out how to customize kids' prosthetics. And it was, it's, and what we did, we, we gathered 15, or I'm sorry, 12 advocates, influencers in the Dallas community. Dak Prescott is one. Dude Perfect, who they're based in Dallas, is another. Mm -hmm. Tremaine hero, Townsend. <laughs> Uh, Kirti Carroll, who at the time was like president of Women's Foot Locker, it's just amazing people who come by way of Dallas to graciously offer Dwight Powell of the Mavericks yeah, yeah. to offer their time to create artwork. Dwight is not an artist, like, <laughs> um, but I wanted him to give effort and to create something for these kids. So, long story short, we cr um, we have now we have like this catalog of artwork that is. Um, Dax artwork, Jordan Rogers, Kirta, Dwight, Dude Perfect. And these kids, like, let, let's just, I'm just using an example. Say, unfortunately, you had, you know, found out you had to have a prosthetic leg. And now, instead of having just that normal one, you can look through this library, this Byway Dallas library, and say, I love, I love Dak Prescott. I want to be Dak Prescott one day. It's kind of like when, you, when you, we, we wear Jordans. Yeah, yeah. And I put my Jordans on when I was little. It's like, damn, I, I think I'm Jordan now. Like, I feel I like jump a little higher, shoes. run a little faster. I wanted that same feeling, these kids to say, I have Dak Prescott's like artwork on my leg. That's so, so cool. I'm still going to keep going. So we figured out how to um, give these patients the opportunity to d decorate and have their own like limited edition world. Now, when they go to school, they're no longer the kid who may be weird are like, yo, you have Dax. I, they can't have that because yeah. they're not, they have their own thing. So going back to the crayon, part of Scottish rights, like branding is the crayon. We utilize this, like the way that, that I, that's a strategy to ask like a deck or to ask a white or ask um, our advocates was, A, we're gonna do a FaceTime call and we're going to, not intimidate them, but it's hard to say no when you're on FaceTime. Yeah. Like, right. Ask anybody you want on FaceTime. They're most likely going to be like, oh, all right, man. But we, we gave them the quick spill of why they're important, why we'd love to have their inclusion on this. And then the sec second part was like, what's your address? And we sent these oversized big-ass crayons to every <laughs> to the people that we asked to be a part of this. Because, you know, how many times you get a business card or something like that, if you meet somebody, that business card gets lost. I was like, we need to have something that's going to command a presence that's going to remind them 
of their importance to us in this project. It's something that's disruptive. Like, what's more disruptive than a, yeah. a gigantic it's like crayon? Deep, solid pound and a half or something. <laughs> yeah. 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 So these weren't even consumer facing. It was just for the people we asked. And I imagine in their office, they've got this crayon on their mantle that serves as like, I'm so happy to be a part of this thing and a reminder of what their importance to the Dallas community is for these kids. So that's the only reason why we did these grants. That's so sick, dude. Dax just got posted, right? Or yeah, NFL fucking posted it, and then the Dallas Cowboys posted it. Yo, that was crazy. That they uh, did that. So I think uh, Jeremiah helped out too, right? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Jeremiah Joss was, he took the, he was with Dak in this um, as as an yeah. entity for this. Absolutely. Brother in law. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. You serious? Yeah. Dude, shout out Jeremiah. That guy. Yeah. In, <laughs> incredible wow i didn't know that yeah so uh he you know he's very he's i wouldn't say he's private he's just very humble as well you know yeah. and uh you know we we actually shot uh tad uh Dag's brother's wedding together no kidding yeah and uh he was just like yeah you know we did something <laughs> i was like oh okay and then i saw that i was like oh okay like he was just super humble about it but i'm like that's not that it's something to like brag about but i'm like it's a an important project to be a part of yeah yeah in my opinion absolutely that jeremiah is incredible he's done a lot of things great things for to him, man. He, yeah i mean i'm sure you changed kids lives with that man i mean it's like you said like them going to school with like oh yeah Jack Dak drew this like who well, else you got it was <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. that's 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 that means so much to them i'm sure that's so sick dude and we're doing year two three like it's it's, it's the we haven't scratched the surface this it's we built it for scale Ultimately, I would love the public just to submit their own own artwork. Yeah. So everybody can be involved. It's not about just celebrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about the kids who want to have their own inclusive type thing. Yeah, it's kind of gives me like Dornbecker vibes. That's super yes, cool. Yes, that's yeah. a great analogy. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. it's actually really cool. Like super sick. Did absolutely. you help design a, a wing at the hospital or what was that? Oh no, 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 absolutely not. That in in Frisco, their uh, campus out there is just a beautiful gallery of like they've got acrylic colored staircase yeah everything's really cool so i had nothing to do with oh that, okay it, it I was like, branding but it, it was funny because like whenever you dropped that project or announced that project they also had those photos and it almost seemed like they worked perfectly together i know it just just so happened yeah <laughs> no i that's it's really cool out there um i really appreciate you giving this this stuff man um eric can you go grab i got a few things for you too obviously oh, you, wow. you came out here i mean that on your own time and the couldn't have been a better guest, man. You've been insane. This is so sick. Great, uh, I got a few things for you too, bro. Um, do sneakers ever inspire your design? Like a colorway or anything like that? That's that little pile right there, Eric. You got it? Absolutely. Yeah. No? Absolutely. They, they I, I I mean, it. I 100% for sure. So this is your little oh, uh, vault um, yes. care package. Yes. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little sealed uh I'm like, you know, something's oh, off book i do not i don't have this book really all. dude thank I god because i was asking her i was like <laughs> surely he has it right and i was like <sighs> this really means it seriously means a lot um I, I i have a billion books i do not have this book i see <laughs> it at Barnes noble and i'm like uh, maybe next time. yeah it's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah it's one of those things like, yeah but this this is especially what we were just talking about yeah, know, yeah like um i worked for nike for about 10 12 years and um but it's 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 this it, it, it it's this is a good reminder of just the hard work and I've seen inside of this book. But it's great to to know that you guys just so happen to give me this thing. This is this is fucking. Incredible. I'm so glad you don't have it. I was really concerned that you had it already. No, Those are just some of the merch that I thought you would like, just basing off your like sense of style that I've seen. I mean, we yeah, are, we talked about this up there. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, of course, dude. I will wear these things. Thank you, man. I really appreciate 100%. it. Yeah. Um, this, this, you're a big inspiration to, to all of us, man. Honestly, like, like I said, the, I was telling you earlier. There's not many brands that have really made it out of Dallas like that, and I think you're one of the pioneers, honestly. Um, and inspired to be like you one day. <laughs> you know, that's that's so <laughs> sick, dude. Well, I, um, I appreciate. It. I'm I'm very happy to come out here to to South. Like like this is very far for me, but this is very rewarding, and I wish I could do this every Friday night. Yeah, you know I mean? this is yeah, man. We couldn't have asked for better podcast man this has been amazing well, when are we gonna collab you really why not like <laughs> let's, let's, let's do something dreams do something. coming true <laughs> <laughs> whenever man you let me know I'm, I'm i'm always available for you brother you just you let me know. that's that's that'd be ridiculous that'd be insane yeah be crazy let's figure something and i you know it, 
love to introduce you guys to any of the partners that I'm working with as they're trying to figure like these guys here are trying to figure out how to get to what you have. Yeah. And they are so cool and they're very open to what who do we need to work with just to make this community better, you know. So you let me know, man. I'm all ears. You're you're the guy, dude. I'd I'd be honored, man. Honored, like for real. That'd be insane. Awesome. Yeah. That'd, that'd mean a lot to me, man. That'd be insane. I'm again, thank you so much for coming out, dude. Like means yeah, this this, this couldn't have been a better first podcast guest, man. This is sick. Um you guys have anything else you want to say? No, just really appreciate you taking the time to come out here. I know everyone's got 101 things going yeah. on, so it really means a lot that you took time, out, especially out of a Friday night. To yeah, come for here sure, too. Yeah, it's like not hang out with a bunch of just normal guys. That just <laughs> hang out, just <laughs> hanging out. Yeah, it's all no. good. It's, it's fun. I mean, we've crossed paths before, and um, yeah, we were talking about uh, and the, the idea of a special guest, and I, I had, and I threw out your name in the hat, and he was kind of like. What you know? I was like, I think he'll do it, man. I don't know. I didn't but. think you would, honestly. I was like, this is <laughs> so I threw your name out there. I was like, uh, obviously, your work means a lot to the city of Dallas, and then for us, you know, just like like you said, when people go left, we go right. Uh, I just thought that this would be a good collab for us, and we really appreciate you coming out, man. It's fun. I, I it's better than screwing around my kid and like trying to get him to go to sleep my mom's at home with him like she can do with him <laughs> shout out to her <laughs> for making this, this happen vacation for me so this is awesome again man I think we good you want to end it there I think we're good alright thank you guys for watching Locked In Episode 10 shout out to my guy Hans man um, follow him follow By Way of Dallas if you guys don't already um, for any of the out of state people go check out the brand for all the in state people I'm sure you've seen it by now or you know are aware of it Tap in, man. Some some of the best stuff come out of Dallas. Um, you got to respect it, man. You got to enjoy it. Check them out. Again, dude, again, we thank you a million times. I'm going to thank you again. Thank you so much for making the time out of your day to do this. And, uh, yeah, see you guys in the next one. Later, y'all.